Section 4.1 is titled Matrices and Data. Uh, we're going to introduce you to what a matrix is, uh, a lot of vocabulary in this section to learn, and we're going to go over some basic operations with matrices. How can we add them, subtract them, multiply them, uh, etc. First, a matrix is defined as a rectangular array of numbers. Now, matrices, uh, the numbers within the matrices are placed inside of square brackets, as seen below. Um, they are made up of rows and columns. The rows go horizontally, columns go vertically. And when we talk about the size of a matrix, size of a matrix is always described as the number of rows by its number of columns. So this one would be a 2 by 3 as it has two rows, three columns coming down. <clears throat> now all of the individual numbers within a row we can call entries um, or elements. Sometimes you hear that word too. Um, I typically just use entry. Um, that's it. Now let's go to the next slide. We'll see uh, an example that'll kind of cement some of this vocabulary. Okay, here we see matrix A. Uh, generally, matrices are denoted by capital letters. Uh, first question, how many rows are there? There are four rows. Four rows going across the matrix. How many columns are there? There are two. Two columns coming down. What is the size of the matrix? I'd call it a four by two matrix. Now, what are the entries at the following locations? Um, you see, first of all, the, the little lowercase a corresponds to a number within capital A's matrix. And the subscript here, this A sub 32, this is like the address of the matrix, or the address of the entry, sorry. It tells us to look for the entry that's in the third row, second column. Okay, so third row is right here. Second column is right here. Third row, second column is seven. A sub 12 would want first row, second column. So first row, second column, that would be negative two. A sub 41 means fourth row, first column, and that would be negative three. Adding and subtracting matrices, I'll say can only be done if the matrices are the same size. Okay. So once we check if they're the same size, you determine that yes or no, you can or cannot add them together. Well, if you can, all you do is simply add the entries in the same corresponding positions within each of the matrices that you're adding and subtracting. It's a very intuitive, natural thing to do. Um, most people get this just kind of right away. Let's do a few examples of it. First example, uh, by visual inspection, we can see that these are the same size. I've got a two by two and a two by two, which means we can add them, and the answer is going to be a two by two. So what we do is we just add the numbers in the respective same positions. So we add the first row, first column numbers, three plus negative seven is negative four. And then we move over to the second spot in this row, negative two plus eight, six. We drop down to the next row, zero plus seven, seven. And then we hit this last spot here in the bottom right hand corner, nine plus two is 11. That's all there is to it. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. 
The next example, we again investigate size just by visual inspection. We can see these are the same size. They're both one by three matrices. They both have one row, three columns. So I'm just going to add across here. Nine and two make eleven. Six and negative five make one. And then three and seven make ten. The last problem on the bottom, uh, visual inspection yields that these are not the same size. I have a 2x2 two two and a 2x3. This is not possible. I cannot add these together, or in this case I cannot subtract these as their size is different. Scalar multiplication is multiplying a matrix by a constant. So it's not matrix multiplication, as we're not multiplying matrices together, uh, we're just multiplying a single matrix by a single number. Okay, And the scalar just distributes inside of the matrix. It's another operation that you're going to find very easy and very intuitive to do. Hey, this slide shows two examples of scalar products. First one we have five times the matrix here, this three by two matrix. The five is just simply going to distribute to everything inside the matrix. We're just going to multiply it on in. So the matrix is going to remain the same size and have 15 negative 10, looks like we're going to have 30, negative 40, have negative 15, 10, and that's it. The next problem, we see two matrices, we have scalar products on each, and we have a subtraction here, so we've got kind of a combination of operations. First thing I'm going to do is these scalars, which is just distributing these numbers inside each respective matrix. So we have a 12, 21, and 6 on the next one makes negative 12, 30. Okay, now we have a subtraction problem. So now, in order to subtract, we have to check and see, are they the same size? And only if they're the same size, again, can we do this? Well, they are the same size. They're both 1 by 2. Uh, the first numbers in each together, um, 12 minus negative 12 is 24. 21 minus 30 is negative 9. Okay, let's end with an example that you can try on your own if you wish. Uh, just pause the video, do the work, and then push play, and you can fast forward to the end result if you want to see if you've got it right or not. Problem defines matrix A to be this one, matrix B is over here, we're asked to find 3 times B minus 4 times A. So, let's begin with 3 times matrix B. So that would be multiplying matrix B times 3, all the numbers times 3, that's a scalar product. So negative 12, 36, 9, 30, 6, and 21 minus, now I need to do 4 times matrix A, so all these numbers times 4 makes 12, 8, negative 8, 16, 12, negative 4. Okay, now it's a subtraction problem, so we check for size. We can see that these are, in fact, the same size, so we're going to go ahead and subtract. Negative 12 minus 12 is negative 24. 36 minus 8 is 28. 9 minus negative 8 is 17. 30 minus 16 is 14. 6 minus 12 is negative 6. 21 minus negative 4 is 25.